using the transition to API call is a great way to do animation in Corona SDK. The only problem with it is that it's time based. So for example, I have this set to take two seconds to go from uh, where the dot is now to where I'm going to click. And it takes two seconds to get there. Uh, but it also takes two seconds if I'm only this far away from it, which means that the speed of the dot is slower if the distance to go is shorter and the speed is uh, greater if the distance is greater. And in some cases that's fine, but in a lot of, uh, especially if you're, if you're moving a player around or something like that, you want, the, you want the speed to be constant, not the time to be constant. Fixing that is actually uh, fairly easy. It takes a little bit of math, but it's the kind of math that you really don't need to know much about. You just copy and paste and that's it. So here is the transition to right here and we're saying that it takes two seconds uh, to go and it could be one second or four seconds or whatever it is uh, we're going to change that but what we need is we need to get the distance that is going to be traveling uh, so so here i have a an event listener uh, looking for a tap and we're going to call move player and this is just a runtime event listener so anywhere on the screen it's going to get that it's going to call move player pass in the event record of course and the event record contains uh, the x and the y of where the where the tap took place so we can find the distance we're going to do local tote dist equals and we're going to call uh, distance between function that you see uh, right up above there and we're going to pass in uh, the player character which is one thing and the event record which is the second parameter okay so this is going to and we're going to jump up here and i'm not going to go through this really uh, all distance between does is it takes two objects that each have an x and a y available to them and it returns the distance in pixels technically it's not pixels because of the the way corona sdk deals with different size devices but we can think of it as as pixels it'll give us the distance anyway once we have the distance then Let's do uh, trav time. Travel time is going to equal the tot dist, total distance divided by player dot speed. And player dot speed is uh, I created down here a property on the player character called speed, and I set it to dot two. And I found this initially just from playing around, seeing which numbers would give me the right speed. All right, and now here inside of transition two, uh, instead of hard coding that I'm gonna say we're using trav time so now when we run this we can uh, click over here and we get the dot moving that speed click over here it moves the same speed the speed is always the same no matter whether it's moving a short distance or a long distance So this, like I said, it it's, uh, doesn't take a lot to, to fix that problem, but it's the kind of problem that it's, it's not an obvious solution right at first. But with this function, distance between, uh, that comes in handy in a lot of different cases. And then taking the distance you're wanting to move, divide it by whatever speed you're wanting the player to move, uh, you are ending up with a travel time that will move your character, move your player, move your object at an even speed, and it doesn't really depend on, on time.